actually do some of the things that you're talking about. You need to have these things happening on a continual basis throughout your startup community. You can't have too much. And it's not a matter of somebody organizing it and saying this is what the startup community's calendar will be. It's almost the opposite. And remember, there is no you know, uh, the vice president of educational programming. If you have an idea of something you want to get other entrepreneurs engaged with, you become a leader, or you just And if you set something up and there's no interest, let it let it fail. I see a hand goes up, which means that Skype is being unhappy. Give it a second. Yeah, it's better now. So repeat what you said ten seconds ago. Better now? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So uh, I don't remember what I said 10 seconds ago. That's kind of a joy to me. Um, <laughs> so whatever I said 10 seconds ago, it lost forever in the ether. Um, so so the, 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 the last comment that I'd make on this is, is if you are interested in something that's going on in the startup community, or you're interested in doing something in the, oh, I remember what I said. I was talking about failure. Yeah, if you're if you're interested in doing something in the startup community, just start it. And if nobody's interested in it or it doesn't really turn into anything, that's okay. Don't feel like you have to keep doing it. Let it die, let it fail, and go on to the next thing that's interesting to you. Having things learn from them, iterate through them, try things is an essential part of the startup community. So if I play it backwards, let me give you those four principles again, and then maybe answer. I've got until about eight pretty my time, so about five more minutes. Um, the four principles backwards are activities and events that engage the entire startup community at all levels. Be inclusive of anyone who wants to engage in the startup community in any way. Okay. Take a very long term leader, and entrepreneurs are the leader. The and then do that, that over a long time you can build a startup community anywhere in the world. All right, let's do a few questions. Just shout them out, the video on my hand is both. Okay, sounds good. Who's got a question for Brad? Uh, yeah, five minutes. No wait till the end, but John. Hey, Brad, Sean Murphy with Mirror of Ventures in Denver, and I'm here with Dan, is one of the fellows, and one of these heard from a lot of entrepreneurs today is. With regulations as entrepreneurs, uh, whether it be at the government level or different ministries, and there's lots of troubles and challenges happening. Can you address that that is a bit of a fear for them and that there's ways around that? And generally, we need more scrappiness in the startup community. Can you speak a little bit about that? And presuppose to this regulatory issue that we need to fix it. Yeah, so. There's two things that are, are truisms, things that happen all the time. One is uh, organizations, especially government and universities, uh, try to organize things to, quote, help entrepreneurs. And in a lot of cases, whatever they're doing actually slows down entrepreneurs. The other is that you're being an entrepreneur and you're creating something within a context that already exists, whether it's your local government or state government or national government or, you know, the world dyna economic dynamics, whatever. As an entrepreneur, you have to be fearless and you have to just view that as a parallel universe. What I mean by that is you have to just be willing to keep going after what you're passionate about, what you believe in. What you think is the thing that should be created, that you're going to be the one that's going to be the creator of it. And you have to recognize that these barriers exist no matter where in the world you are. They just are different. And part of the challenge of being an entrepreneur is busting through the barriers. And you have to do it in a way that's legal, in a way that's ethical. Um, but you can't let the barriers stifle you. You can't let the barriers inhibit you. You can't feel like you have to uh, adhere to the norms because somebody said that's the way it is. Um, you have to keep pushing on the edges of it all. 
And that's the essence of being an entrepreneur. If you don't have that fire, if you don't have the willingness to keep trying new things, you know, keep experimenting, and keep looking for new ways to do the thing that you care about, um, you will be, be slow. That it will be frustrating. You will get tired. But it's okay to be frustrated. It is continuing to channel your energy into the business uh, that you're trying to create. You have to brace yourself that you'll be lonely for a long time. Um, for starters, you don't need a ton of people working together. You need, a, you need. My dad likes to call it a posse. I don't know if you guys know what a posse is, but in the Western United States, uh, uh, the lawmakers, before there were really laws in the, in the Western United States, the sheriff used to be able to get a posse, and it was a, get, a gang of people who would help enforce the laws. And this notion of a posse is really good. You just want a posse. You want four, five, six people. You don't need a hundred. And so the loneliness is if you're the only one. But there's more than one person in this room. So essentially everybody in this room is your posse. And by the way, they don't have to be your neighbors. I can be part of your posse. Uh, um, if there are things I can do to help you from afar, my email address is bradatbell.com, and I'm happy to try to be helpful from afar. Uh, um, helpful in terms of giving advice, helpful in terms of giving feedback, helpful in terms of giving encouragement. So the trick is to find a small group of people who are committed to these four principles, right? To be leaders, to go on a long-term journey, to be inclusive, and to do stuff around entrepreneurship continually. And if you can get a half dozen people like that to get with the third, and you can commit to each other to work inclusively with each other. You know that you'll have things that don't work. You know that you'll have bad days. You know that you'll have frustrations. You'll know that you'll have disagreements. But you're on the same team on a long-term mission. You won't get lonely. And what you'll find is that over two, three, four, five, six years, all of a sudden, that posse will be 10 people, or 15 people, or 20 people, or 30 people. Or you might surprise yourself, and all of a sudden, everybody wants to be part of it. And now you have a whole new set of problems, which is you have people who want to be a part of it, but aren't willing to be leaders. That's a good problem. And, and once you have that problem, then your, your challenge is to figure out how to manage some scale uh, of the startup community versus just getting it going. But I, I think that don't, un, don't overestimate how many people you need to have involved to keep things moving. All right, hope this was helpful. I know it was short, but I appreciate you guys letting me do it by Skype, and good luck with the rest of the, the day and evening. Right, thanks for the time. Yeah. Thank you. Right, um, so uh, one of the things I want to do is um, just talk about that, now that we've kind of heard Brad talk about it. Some of you heard me talk about it earlier today. That is literally the roadmap that we followed in Charlotte, North Carolina four years ago, there was really no robust entrepreneurial community in Charlotte, um, and this group that came together, it's funny because we did this about a year before Brad's book came out, and the concepts are the exact same, and there's a group that came together called the Charlotte Entrepreneurial Alliance, and it's someone from the university in where uh, Devin works, and it was someone from the city, and it was someone from the Chamber of Commerce, and it was a bunch of entrepreneurs, and it was me from Packard Place, uh, and now there's the entrepreneur organization, the tech organization, and we came together in Charlotte, and no one appointed us. There are no offices, there are no bylaws, there are no votes. We get together every two months and we talk about what's happening in the startup start community. And anytime somebody wants to start something, we're like, great, how can we support them and figure out how to make it happen? And it's not about controlling anything, it's about helping push new stuff forward and letting, seeing what works and seeing what, what fades out and what dies. And it's been immensely successful. 
Um, and I think if you look at, um, take a longer term view of where we're at now, we've been able to do that in Charlotte because of kind of this initiative. Um, the other thing I would say that's interesting about Charlotte, because none of you know it very well, I would describe Charlotte as a command and control town. We grew up as a banking town, right? Banking is all about command and control, following orders, don't leave, just do what you're told. There's a lot of similarities in culture between Charlotte, North Carolina, and Harare for a whole bunch of different reasons, but there's, there's a lot of similarities to that. And other rural communities can succeed in those environments because you form your own community and your own leadership with it, and I think it'd be very powerful. Um, so I wanted to make that point um, and see what other kind of thoughts or comments you might have. You, you've been talked at a lot today. I'm curious to know whether you think this is useful, kind of full of it, stuff you should do. I'm curious to know what you think, because someone in this room, any of you in this room, that we're here today, have to step up and be those leaders, or it's not gonna happen. Personally, I, I, I have been grappling for years with my friends who know uh, how to stimulate job creation. This is the architecture of the project we do the way. So when he was going through the uh, principles, the four principles, both from the top and down, uh, I did a personal scan. We read Yeah. We read I, I think very you are. Ready, very ready. Very ready. Oh. It, it's interesting. Having I mean, come, come very here ready. and see, very ready. I'm telling you, you all have everything you need very for this community ready. to make this go back to except for that, that next step of bringing it together. You are right on the end. I really believe that. Yeah. Skype. He was one of the first people I thought of when, when we talked about this trip. So he will help you. Um, the thought I want to leave you all with um, that's interesting about Charlotte, and I see it here too, and um, it's one of the challenges you're going to have to get over. Um, Charlotte had a big chip on its shoulder. Do you know that expression? When, when you have a chip on your shoulder about something? And when we started trying to do this off the Renaissance in Charlotte, there were a lot of people who were like, oh, Charlotte doesn't have capital. We, have, we don't have the history of startups. No one's done a big exit. We don't have a, you know, an incubator spot. We don't have a demo thing. And they're all these kind of naysayers. But if you listen to those people, it's very easy to listen to those people because that's been your history. It's not where you're going. And there are a few people stepped up and said, yeah, so you know what? We created an incubator called RevTech Labs. We did the first demo day ever in Charlotte. That happened three years ago. It was the first time we ever got a in the room. And we got them in the room because we had quality control. We went to some companies. These were the best 10 startups we had to show them in Charlotte. And that was, that was three years ago. This is ancient history. And we did 
not the government, not the university, not the city council, not the chamber. The entrepreneurial meeting did it, and it just picked up momentum. The first one was pretty modest, and the second one was more advanced. In this fourth class of Rontech, only the fourth, fourth class, we had companies apply from 22 countries around the world, 23 states. We accepted less than 7% of the applicants in the program. Four years to get to that level. And every cycle, we just got better and better at what we're doing. So it's a long-winded way of saying, there came a point in Charlotte where the people that kept wanting to look at all the things we didn't have and all the problems and all the barriers and just say, stop whining. Focus on what we have and the positive we have and go make it happen. And there's going to be a turning point here for you. You guys have lots of challenges, right? The challenges you have, they aren't any bigger than other startup communities anywhere else in the world. So focus on the positive we have and go make it happen. The communities that just go and make it happen are the ones that are going to be successful. That's the whole concept of the See a show of hands, who is ready to step up and be a leader of this Charlotte, right? When other people start standing up and taking success for things we've done, we know we start to be successful. 
I, I used this expression the other night at dinner, um, and, and I'm not sure it's an expression you all would know, but success has many fathers, whereas failure is an orphan. 